Hello everyone, Cessner here. Welcome to day 2 of our game development with Zero Knowledge series. Today we learned about basic player movements, basic C-sharp coding, and also learned how to publish our game. We even made two simple games and I'll be putting the links down below. Before we jump to our video, make sure to hit like and subscribe and follow me on twitch.tv slash Cessner. Make sure to check out as well the day 1 of our series on the link down below. So let's get started. So we care we are going to learn about player controls. Let's go ahead and start. Hi, future Cessner here who is editing the videos right now. So I just want to warn everyone that this video is going to be very long, but it's gonna be worth it and it's a very solid foundation in starting game development. I'm gonna turn these videos into parts so it's easier to watch and digest. Let's continue to the video. To start with player controls, so go to Unity. Add a new project, name it Basic Movement Controls and wait for Unity to load. So while waiting that, go to your learnunity.com, click the Prototype 1 Asset Store, then you should add this to my assets. I've already added it so that's why it doesn't appear anymore. But once Unity, oh, oops, once Unity has finished loading, you can import your asset in the package manager. So go to window, make sure to delete everything first. Delete everything here. Go to window, go to window, package manager. And wait for it to finish. Click this drag, drop down menu, my assets. Import the create with code prototype one driving simulation asset. Import it, but don't upgrade it. Just skip, skip it, then import. Wait for it to finish importing, and click close. Then go to scenes and go to prototype one. If this appears, don't save, and you can see your scene with this runway, this road. Click play to check if everything's fine and if it's playing then your game is running fine. Okay, so once you have set it up your Unity for the prototyping, now we were going to add our vehicle to your scene. So we are going to add our vehicle to the scene. Go to the course library, vehicles and choose whatever vehicle you like. For me, I'm going to use this tank. Make sure it's on the ground. You can click it on the hierarchy window. Press F to focus and we have our vehicle there. To make sure that your vehicle is focused on or clicked or selected, it, it will appear on the inspector window. So first, we are going to rename this vehicle to vehicle or just rename it tank. That's better. And I'm going to add my obstacles. On the course library, you can find here obstacles and choose whatever obstacles you like. But since we have a tank here, I'm going to add some rocks. And you can simply drag and drop it to your asset or to your scene or to your hierarchy window. But I'm going to drag it to my scene. And as you can see, the rock actually snaps to the road and if you look on the transform window in inspector you can see the position as well of the rock so what we're gonna do is reset the position of the rock so it's gonna go uh, at 000, zero, zero. So we're going to reset the position of our vehicle as well to 000, zero, zero. then Let's move the rock here. Let's rename this to rock. Then we are going to move this rock, rock using this Z axis. Because as you can see, the X axis is the red one. Y axis is the, yellow, the green one. And the blue one is the Z axis. So we want to move it in front of our tank so we can have it as obstacles for the road. Just maybe add 30. And as you can see here, if we click F and focus on the rock, the rock is on the middle of the path. 
that's exactly what we wanted to happen so for now we are going to locate our camera and run our game so go to your hierarchy window click on main camera use your move and rotate tool which is y and as you can see there is a preview camera preview on the bottom right of the screen so move your camera when, wherever you like and position your game for my game i'll position it this way and play the game by clicking the play button here and you can see the camera preview in action so once you click the play button again it will exit the game and go back to your scene so now that we know how to move our camera we will going to move the camera behind our vehicle so if you press y and you choose the move rotate or in scale tool so what i didn't know about this tool is if you for example we click on the tank if we click the box here it actually scales your object so that's another function of that tool so once again we are going to move the camera behind our tank let's move it here use the circles here to rotate it rotate the camera and let's try it this way so you can also type here rotate it to zero let's try that and let's press play and see uh, it looks a little bit off-centered Let's try to move it to the left Out to the right Yeah, there we go. It's a nice looking camera angle. Maybe we can uh, Tilt it downward a little bit And let's press play. Yeah Maybe push it upward and move it a little bit down So it actually feels like third person yeah, so we have now a nice camera angle, right? So what we're going to do now is go to your course library. Actually, go to your assets folder. Then right-click there and create a folder named script. So on the asset folder, we have now our folder named script. So right-click on the script folder and create a C-sharp script. What does a script do? A script basically controls everything that is about to happen on your game objects. You can code anything that you want to happen for example our tank we want it to move we code it a script then add a script to it to add a script you will drag and drop it to your tank here and you can see on the inspector window that you have the script you can remove the other one i double added here and you can also drag and drop the script once you click on the tank you can drag and drop the script here or you can add component and script then find the script that you want to use something like that and for now we have already added our script here and let's continue so now we're going to open our script go to our assets and scripts and you can see here the player controller double click it and if you double click it it will open up an IDE called Microsoft Visual Studio so if you don't have a Microsoft Visual Studio just go to Google and type in Microsoft Visual Studio and the first link just click it and there's a free Visual Studio here that you can download download it and set it up for unity there's a lot of tutorials in the internet so basically on the IDE you can see a different code here that is set up by unity so this is a class a public class player controller which extends I mean which adapts the classes in mono behavior which is a pre-made class i think inside unity and what we have here are methods and uh, void start and void update those are methods you can see a method if you see void here there are also other method type like void you can also have int and you can also have car you can also have boolean bool it depends on the programming language the syntax but here we have a method so what we're going to learn now is how to add a comment so a comment is initialized by using two backslashes so type here move the player forward so a comment is essentially as the word itself a comment 
it doesn't do anything on your program and it doesn't affect the program it's just used there for convenience for yourself when you're reviewing your code and for other programmers who are reviewing your code as well so if we hit save here and go back to our unity for unity editor you can see that what that our player controller updated here and the inspector window moved the player forward so for you guys who don't have any programming languages i suggest for you guys to go to w3schools.com and go here there is a c sharp programming tutorial here you don't have to have visual studio or any ide because if you try it for yourself uh, you can see that there's a code here and there's an output screen here so if i change it here welcome to my stream and run As you can see, the output is on the right side. So you don't have any. You don't have to have any IDE. You just go on the web page and you can study programming. It's a very nice website. Go to wdschools.com/cs. Such default is. So now we're going to make our vehicle move. So double click again on your script. So what we need to do is use transform with small letter T dot translate with big letter T. And since you are, if you look at your vehicle and move it using your move tool and move it forward, what you can see is the Z axis is the only one that's moving. So let's reset the position. So let's go to our code and, and type in, because usually it's X, Y, and Z axis. So we're going to type 0, 0, and 1, add spaces to make it look better, and add a semicolon at the end. Semicolon on the end uh, translates to a period in a sentence. So that's the end of a sentence if you have a period. In the programming, it's the end of a statement. So transform the translate 001 and period. Something like that. Let's save it and let's play and see if our character moves. Yep, so our vehicle is moving now at a very fast rate. And that's because we have to adjust the speed here later on. So there's another way of making the vehicle move so double click again the script and from what we learned transform the translate 001 is equivalent to transform dot translate vector 3 uh, capital B vector 3 and we're going to add forward vector 3 dot forward and add a semicolon let's try and save then run our Unity program. You can see here on the inspector window, it's already updated. Let's try and run. Yep. So it's essentially the ba the same thing happened. It's just that transform the translate vector three dot forward is the same as using transform dot translate zero zero one. 